Welcome to Retiring Well, where it's our job to help you enjoy financial security in any economy. Well, we've got a terrific show lined up for you this week. We're going to be talking about mortgages. Interest rates are changing. What do you need to know? What do you need to do? Before we jump into that topic, as we do every week, let's introduce you to the real stars of the show, the retirement planning specialists who work with people just like you each and every day. And in Birmingham, Alabama, this is Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor and your Retirement Planning Specialist, Tad Hill. Retiring well with Michael Reese, providing financial security in any economy. Today is the day you can take control of your financial future and eliminate worrying about your money forever. Featuring Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor, Tad Hill, founder of Freedom Financial Group in Birmingham. This weekend, talking about interest rates and mortgages. You know, this is a really big topic. You're, maybe you're looking to buy a new home. Maybe you have a home, you have a mortgage on your home. Mortgage rates, where the rates are, it's, you always want to keep that in mind because no matter where you are in the spectrum of home buying, home shopping, or home ownership, the rates that are in place play a real important role with your financial planning. And, you know, this article comes from The Motley Fool, and they're talking about something that happened eh, a few weeks back in July. Uh, they called it Friday's Catastrophic Surge in Mortgage Rates. What are they talking about here? Well, they say, I just want to read a little bit of this for you. It says, if you're thinking about buying a home, then you're probably not going to like what I'm about to say. On Friday, while you're busy nursing yourself back to life following you know, the, the 4th of July celebrations, mortgage rates exploded. Uh, and what they said here is, according to estimates, the rate on a 30-year conventional mortgage, you know, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage, you're all familiar with it, it jumped uh, into 4.75% territory. It went up about 1% here in a day. 1% in a day. Well, what's going on here? What's happening is a few different things are moving together and it's putting pressure, upward pressure on mortgage rates. Uh, we have, number one, the Fed's out there with their, uh, you know, they're doing this uh, bond buying. Every month they're buying $85 billion uh, of, they're putting $85 billion of fresh money into the market. That's keeping interest rates down. Well, they said, hey, we're going to start tapering that off in 2000. 14, maybe as late as the fall of 2013. Well, that's freaking people out a little bit, and they're not, uh, you know, in the bond markets, and it's making interest rates go up a little bit. On top of that, uh, the job market's actually coming back pretty well. At least the reports are that the job market's coming back. And so what's happening is all the investors out there, they're saying, holy cow, uh, if the job market's coming back, maybe the economy's coming back, the Fed's going to stop their bond buying for sure, closer to fall versus 2014 and you know they're all saying up this is ending so interest rates are going up and the banks are saying yep we know they're going up we better start charging more on mortgages so what does this mean if you're buying a home stop messing around hurry up and get one uh, go ahead and lock in those rates as quick as you can they're as low as they're ever going to be they may not be this low below five percent on 30-year mortgages they may not be that low again for some time if you own a home you have a mortgage and you've been looking at maybe refinancing to a lower rate you just haven't done it yet make sure take advantage check with the lenders now get it done while you can if you can get a loan 30 years at less than five percent hey that's a win in anybody's book any day so again if you're new looking to buy a house you know, get those rates locked in find that house get moving if you already have a home if and you were considering refinancing take a hard look now this might be your last best opportunity to do so so it's important that you know what's going on mortgage rates at all times now it also affects your retirement planning what i want to do now is i want to bring in the real star of the show the, your retirement planning specialist they're going to talk about smart moves to make with mortgages 
while, as you're nearing retirement, once you're in retirement, and they're also going to touch on reverse mortgages. When are they appropriate and when are they not appropriate? So this is going to be really important information. Take a look. And now, featuring Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor, Tad Hill. Well, Mike, for the folks uh, watching today, if you've been watching our show for very long, if you've listened to my radio show on ERC or API on the weekends, uh, then you've heard me banging this drum for at least a year. Interest rates have been at historical lows due to the monetary policy of our central government. And forget whether we agree with the policy or we think the government's doing the right thing, we can't control what the Fed's going to do. But what we do need to do is be aware of what's going on and the impact that it's going to have. So I have been preaching for at least a year that we've got to have a strategy for rising interest rates. And I've also been preaching that when interest rates start rising, there's a very good chance that they may not rise in a fluid, uh, controllable way. You know, if you stretch a rubber band too tight and you let it go, it doesn't snap back to its original position. It tends to overshoot. So that's a little bit of what's happened in interest rates in the last 60 days. We've seen the 10-year Treasury jump over 1% in the last 45 days. And as Mike just described, mortgage rates have done the exact same thing. So if you're looking at refinancing or you're looking at buying a house and you've been holding off because you think rates may keep dropping, uh, let's be clear about it. I think that is a very, very, very good chance. I can't predict the future and, and because of my fiduciary duty to you, I have to give you disclaimers like I can't predict the future, but I feel very certain that we've seen the lowest interest rates we're gonna see and I'll even go so far as to say, we may have seen the lowest interest rates we're gonna see in our lifetime. So right now you can get a mortgage for under 5%. I agree with Mike, you need to make it happen. If you're refinancing, you need to make that happen. Now, one other thing that I've gotta make you aware of, forget mortgage rates for a second, not that they don't matter, but the bigger impact on retirement planning portfolios in terms of what's happening in the interest rate market is what is going to be happening with your fixed income investments, your bonds, your preferred stocks, the mutual funds that you have that are invested in bonds and preferred stocks. We're already seeing a lot of price pressure on these things, and these are the parts of your portfolio that you've been told are the safe or secure or conservative parts of your portfolio. It is critical that you have a strategy for how to manage your fixed income investments when we go through a rising interest rate environment, which it looks like we are in. It looks like we're in the middle of it happening. We've been talking about when it happens, when it happens, when it happens. Well, clearly it's happening. So, and the more that the Fed uh, pairs down the QE, the quantitative, quantitative easing, the bond buying, the more they, they step back from that, the likelihood is very high that we're gonna to continue to see rising interest rates. So I'm way more concerned about the impact on your investment portfolio of rising rates, frankly, than I am you know, what's happening with you refinancing your mortgage. But this is something that we've got to be very aware of and very concerned about, and that's what good retirement planning does. If you wanna have these answers for yourself and you wanna understand how to have a strategy for rising interest rates, give us a call and I'll help you sit down and figure that out. Once again, terrific advice from a retirement planning specialist. And again, just a reminder, if you have questions about your circumstances, you know, whether it's income planning, tax planning, what have you, anything to do with your retirement planning, call the number on the screen. It'll give you an opportunity to talk to your retirement planning specialist, sit down with them if appropriate. Uh, don't miss out on that opportunity. All right, it's time for our trivia question of the week. This week's trivia question comes to us courtesy of Medicare.gov, and here it is. According to a U.S. Department Health and Human Services study, they say that this percentage of people who reach age 65 will enter a nursing home. Is the percentage 30%, 40%, 50%, or 60%? Stay tuned. We'll share the answer at the end of the show. 
Hi, my name is Michael Reese. I'm a certified financial planner who specializes in retirement planning. And for the last 18 years, I've been helping my clients enjoy financial security during their retirement years. And one of the hottest financial tools out there right now for retirement planning are annuities, but they're also the most misunderstood. And it's really no surprise why things are so confusing because both the insurance companies and the financial media do such a poor job explaining what annuities are and when they should best be used. That's why I've created a series of videos absolutely free that you can watch in the comfort of your own home to teach you what annuities are and how they work. Visit www.makingannuitiesimple.com today for a free video series with TV host and retirement planning strategist Michael Reese. Welcome back. It's time for our question of the week. This week's question comes from Hannah from DeWitt, Michigan. Are reverse mortgages legitimate tools or are they just a ripoff? I'm getting conflicting information. You know, the way this question is phrased makes me feel the need to explain something that's a concept that I talk about a lot, both here on the television show and on my radio show. And that is that things like reverse mortgages or different kinds of investments, I look at these things as tools. They are instruments designed to do different things. So I don't think of uh, things like this as either inherently good or inherently bad. Now, if, if somebody's running a Ponzi scheme, that's inherently bad. But if you're talking about a, legit a legitimate financial tool, like a reverse mortgage or stocks or bonds or mutual funds or annuities or ETFs, CDs, cash, you know, these are all legitimate tools that are just designed to do different things. So, few things to understand about reverse mortgages. They can be expensive. If you're going to do a reverse mortgage, the fees involved can be high. But I will say this, in the right circumstances, I've seen a reverse mortgage be a very good solution to a tough problem and here's typically when I think it may be a fit. If you are still paying on your mortgage payment and you're retired and you've got cash flow issues, this is a good way to eliminate the need to pay your mortgage payment. Uh, if you have a need to generate more cash flow in retirement and you don't have enough savings, it's, it can be a good way to do that. Because your mortgage, if you've got a lot of equity in your home, that's just money that's sitting there doing nothing for you. It's not earning any income. Uh, the value of your home may be going up, but unless you plan on selling your home at some point, that may not matter to you. And for most retirees, if you're in your house, you plan on staying there at that point. So this is a way to take the equity in your home and leverage it, generate some income or eliminate some current expense like your existing mortgage payment. Now you have to understand that, uh, that it, when you pass away, the bank's gonna sell the house and whatever uh, profit there is in that, they're gonna pull their fees out that they haven't taken out already and the, anything left over will be left to your kids. But you are able to stay in your house. It's not like somebody's gonna come kick you out of your house. That's one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have. So I'm, I, I only recommend reverse mortgages in certain circumstances, normally as a last resort, but as a last resort, they can be a good tool. Do you want your question answered on Retiring Well? Send us an email to question at retiringwell.tv. Welcome to this week's Chalk Talk, where we're going to spend a few minutes talking about beneficiary arrangements. And this is going to hold true whether it's for your IRA, for your life insurance, for your wills or trusts. You know, anytime you want to leave money, you want to make sure that you have in your mind a good understanding of how you want to lay out the beneficiaries. So what I have here for our little examples, let's pretend that we have dad here. So here we have dad and dad has money in a retirement plan, an IRA. And who of course do you think his primary beneficiary is? Well, of course it's going to be mom. I'm going to put a primary 
right? Primary beneficiary is mom. What does that mean? If dad dies and mom's still alive, mom gets all the money. Okay, so that means primary beneficiary. But what if mom dies before dad? Or what if they die at the same time? Then what do you need? Well, then you need what are called secondary or contingent beneficiaries. In our little example here, mom and dad have three children. Child one, two, and three. So what dad's going to do is he's going to name a second line, and they're going to be contingent, a second line of beneficiaries. So just in case mom dies before he does, or they die at the same time, we've got the second line of beneficiaries, the three children. So maybe a third, a third, a third is how it goes. But here's the deal. Mom and dad, in our little example, they're like a lot of folks out there because some of their children have children themselves. GC, it stands for grandchildren. So child number one here has three children or three grandchildren. Child number two, no children at all. Child number three, two grandchildren. Well, now we have to start asking questions like this. Let's assume that mom dies before dad. So now we just have dad. He dies, the money's supposed to go to the three children. Well, what if, let's pick this one. What if this one right here happens to die before dad does? Then what happens? Well, if you do it wrong, if you set up your beneficiaries wrong, what will happen is these two grandchildren will be disinherited. If you do it improperly, your beneficiary arrangements, what will happen is all the money will then go to child one and child two. This whole line will be cut right off. Yet that's not what most people want. Most people would say, we want this child share to go to their two children uh, right here, grandchild, uh, I guess four and five in our example. So how do you fix it? Use the language per stirpes. That's the language you want to use on your beneficiary arrangements. It'll fix the problem for you. Hi, Michael Reese here. And you know, what I found is in that critical period, the five years before retirement, all the way to the five years after retirement, in that 10 year period, I find that over and over again, uh, Americans are making mistakes with their financial planning that quite frankly, are easily avoided. And, and it really almost breaks my heart because if you make little mistakes in this period of time, you can have huge consequences. So in order to help you not make those mistakes, I've put together a simple website with some free videos uh, from me to you to help you be smart about your planning. The website is called 3mistakes.com. It's the number three spelled out, T-H-R-E-E, -E, 3mistakes.com. Why don't you go there today? Okay, Birmingham, this is the retirement planning story of the week. And this week we're going to talk about Marty and Jennifer from Greystone. Marty and Jennifer came in to see me because they were concerned about the bond bubble. And we've been talking about rising interest rates and the effect of rising interest rates on your mortgage rate if you're going to buy a house or refinance. But we're also talking about the effect of rising interest rates on your fixed income investments. So if you've got bonds, preferred stocks, mutual funds or ETFs that invest in these things to give you diversification, but the underlying investments are either bonds, preferred stocks, that sort of thing. Anything that is going to be sensitive to changes in interest rates, then listen up because Marty and Jennifer came in and what we found was that they had about 70% of their money in bond mutual funds and 30% in stocks. And they said, well, wait a minute, I thought that was the right thing to do because we were using the rule of 100. And we've, we've explained the rule of 100 in the past on the show, but essentially that means you take your age and invest it in fixed income type investments. And, you're, and the difference between your age and 100 and invest that for growth. So they were around 70 years old, and so they had about 70% of their money in fixed income, bond mutual funds, 30% in growth, 
But what they had, had been realizing over the last 60 days was they were seeing drops in their bond mutual funds. And when we analyzed the mutual funds, here's what we found. We found that the maturity, the average maturity dates on the underlying bonds were pretty far out. So uh, that means that the average bond in the mutual fund wasn't going to mature until further down the road. Now, for the layperson, the specific impact of that is for every 1% rise in interest rates, you're going to see a loss in value in your bonds, and the loss in value will be more if your maturity dates are further out. So the longer it is until your bonds mature or the average maturity of your mutual fund, the more sensitive the price of the bonds are going to be to rising interest rates. So they came in and they said, you know, our brokers never mentioned this to us and we heard you on the, uh, on the radio and we wanted to talk to you about this. So we sat down and we went through that and we realized that what they really needed, we needed to put together a specific structure that had some holdings in it that were gonna generate income like the bonds were designed to do, but were actually gonna go up with rising interest rates and some other pieces of the portfolio that were gonna generate yield income that weren't going to be sensitive to rising interest rates. We still needed the growth, but what they needed more than anything was income from their investments. We carved out a small portion of their savings and set it aside to create what I call a family pension, an income stream that they can't outlive as long as either one of them are living. So we took pieces of the different investment plan and designed them to do different things. So when we were done, we had reduced their exposure to rising interest rates considerably because right now, in my opinion, rising interest rates are one of the biggest risks to retirement plans. So if you're curious about this for yourself, you're wondering how much exposure you've got to the bond bubble or if you've got a strategy that's gonna weather that storm and, and do it as, and keep you able to be successful, Give the number on the screen a call. I'm willing to set aside time on my calendar to help you figure out exactly what your circumstances are and the best way to protect your retirement. Wow, every single week we hear another reason why it's so important that you sit down with a retirement planning specialist. Did you know you can just talk to these guys on the phone? You can sit down with them in person for free, no obligation if appropriate. Why not take advantage of that? Just call the number on the screen, connect with your retirement planning specialists. Okay, it's time to turn the page a little bit because we have another treat for you from my dog, Charlie. All right, I don't know about you, but my dog, Charlie, is a huge fan of The Sopranos. And over the past few weeks, actually maybe a month and a half ago or so, uh, James Gandolfini passed away. Not 100% certain that I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Charlie could tell me. Anyway, uh, we have a terrific article for you that Charlie pulled up for me to talk about. Uh, he, James Gandolfini and the estate that he left and all the problems. But before we do that, Charlie also has a little clip for you. Let's go ahead and run it, guys. This shit I'm telling you, it'll all blow over. Didn't you admit to Dr. Cusimano that you were feeling depressed? Melfi. What part of the boot you from, hon? Dr. Melfi. So did you get any golf in down in Boca, Uncle June? Fucking manners, please! So you play uh, Manatee, or what's the name of the other one? Will you let the man tee you off? You yap worse than six barbers. How's Junior? Okay. He's gonna be all right. Tell him he's in our prayers, et cetera. I'll be sure and let him know. One other thing, though. John said he went to a cookout at your house. Yeah. Don doesn't wear shorts. 
All right, come on. Come on. Elevator, sir. I can't watch this again. It's a DVD. This is the advanced bootleg. These are the alternate takes, Tom. What, are you going to call Coppola with ideas on how to fix it? I don't thank him yet. There's a night ball witness. What are you talking about? Did you see anybody? Did you see another living soul? No. Don't worry. No, me a bump in the road. Oh, you're beautiful. But we do share some cultural ideas. Religious, culinary, matriarchal. Maybe we can motivate you to testify. Well, why don't you get the kumquats out of your mouth and get to the f***ing point? Because I don't know what you're talking about. Sounds like a good guy to golf with, huh? All righty, here we go. Uh, James Gandolfini's $30 million estate tax mistake. Uh, in The Sopranos, the IRS didn't stand a chance against Mafia boss Tony Soprano, but thanks to poor planning, the IRS will be the biggest beneficiary of actor James Gandolfini's estate. This guy died with an estimated net worth of about $70 million. And, you know, what he did, he gave some of it to charity, but then listen to this. In his will, he gave 30% to a, a sister, 30% to another sister, 20% to his wife, and 20% to his daughter. Meanwhile, he's got a son who was a recipient of an enormous life insurance policy. So, here's what we need to know about this. Charlie says, right, my dog Charlie will tell you where did he mess up. Number one, just by leaving assets uh, straight out to his wife, his sisters, his daughter, enormous estate taxes. Instead of leaving them $70 million, he's going to leave them closer to 40 because 30 million of it is going to go to the IRS in estate taxes. Charlie says though, so, Tony Soprano, you did a great job buying life insurance for your son because that went to the son 100% tax free. That was a good job. So, Tony, you did some good stuff. You did some bad stuff. Bada bing, you're gone. The IRS collected. Not what you wanted, but that's what happens when you're not planning. And, folks, that's our treat from My Dog Charlie. All right, as we wrap up the show this week, we need to get back to our trivia question and give you the answer. Remember from Medicare.gov, if you reach age 65, what are the odds that you will need to stay in a nursing home at some point? Not any other type of long-term care, just a nursing home. 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%. The answer is B as in boy, 40%. The odds are high. Plan appropriately. Have a great week, folks.